Imagine staying at a hotel, and you decide to drink from the tap water at the hotel. You turn the water on, and this blackish-brown water spits out first before turning back into normal-looking water. But a smell is left behind to fill your nose. You then complain to the front desk, and they tell you, you aren't the first ones to complain about this. A few days later, you arrive home and see on the news about the hotel you were just at and learned that the reason the water looked and smelled like death was because it was. Hello everyone, my name is Juby Scott, and today we are going to be looking at one of the strangest murder disappearances of all time, Alisa Lam at the Cecil Hotel. This is Juby After Dark. <laughs> Elisa Lam, the daughter of immigrants from Hong Kong, was a student at the University of British Columbia. Lam had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression. She had been prescribed several medications for her mental health issues. Lam had a history of not taking her bipolar medications and, as a result, on several occasions suffered hallucinations that would cause her to hide under her bed for refuge. She was hospitalized at least once for one of these episodes. For her trip to California, Lam traveled alone on Amtrak and inner city buses. She visited the San Diego Zoo and posted photos taken there on social media. On January 26, she arrived in Los Angeles. After two days, she checked into the Cecil Hotel near downtown Skid Row. Lam was initially assigned a shared room on the hotel's fifth floor. However, her roommates complained about what the hotel's lawyer would later describe as certain odd behavior, and Lam was moved to a room of her own after two days. According to Amy Price, the manager at Cito Hotel and Stay on Main, at the time of Lam's disappearance, Lam was leaving notes for her roommates that said, go home and go away, and would lock the door to her room and require a password for entry. A few days before her disappearance, Lam attended a live taping of Conan at Burbank but was escorted off the premises by security due to disruptive behavior. Lamb contact Lam contacted her parents in British Columbia daily while traveling. On January 31st, 2013, the day she was scheduled to check out of the Cecil and leave for Santa Cruz, her parents did not hear from her and called the LAPD. Her family flew to Los Angeles to help with the search. Hotel staff who saw Lamb that day said she was alone. Outside the hotel, Katie Orphan, manager of The Last Bookstore, was the only person who recalled seeing her that day. She was outgoing, very friendly, very lively, while getting gifts to take home to her family, Orphan told CNN. She was talking about what books she was getting and whether or not what she was getting would be too heavy for her to carry around as she traveled, Orphan added. Police searched the hotel to the extent that they legally could. They searched Lamb's room and had dogs go through the building, including the rooftop. But the dogs were unsuccessful in detecting her scent. But we didn't search every room, Sergeant Rudy Lopez said later. We could only do that if we had probable cause, to believe a crime had been committed. On February 6th, a week later after Lamb has last been seen, the LAPD decided more help was needed. Flyers with her image were posted in the neighborhood and online. It brought the case to the public's attention through the media. On February 13th, after another week with no sign of Lamb, the LAPD released a video of the last known sighting of her taking in one of Cecil's elevators by a video surveillance camera on January 31st. In approximately two and a half minutes of footage, Lamb, alone, makes unusual moods and gestures. She appears to press every button on the elevator panel, peers into the hallway, then leaves the elevator at one point while its doors remain open. When the doors fail to close after she returns, she leaves. The doors close later. The video drew worldwide interest in the case due to Land's strange behavior and has been extensively analyzed and discussed. It was reposted widely, including on the Chinese video sharing site Yuku. Many of the commenters found it unsettling to watch. 
but several theories emerged to explain her actions. One was that Lim was trying to get the elevator car to move in order to escape from someone who was pursuing her. Others suggested that she might be under the influence of ecstasy or some other drug, but none were detected in her body. When her bipolar disorder became known, the theory that she was having a psychotic episode also emerged. During the search for Lam, guests at the hotel began complaining about low water pressure. Some later claimed their water was colored black and had an unusual taste. On the morning of February 19th, Santiago Lopez, a hotel maintenance worker, found Lam's body in one of four 1,000 gallon tanks located on the roof providing water to the guest's rooms, a kitchen, and a coffee shop. Through the open hatch, he saw Lance lying face up in the water. The tank was drained and cut open since its maintenance hatch was too small to accommodate equipment needed to remove Lance's body. On February 21st, the Los Angeles cor Coroner's Office issued a finding of accidental drowning, with bipolar disorder as a significant factor. The full coroner's report, released on June 4th, stated that Lan's body had been found naked, clothing similar to what she was wearing in the elevator video was floating in the water, coated with a sand-like particulate. Her watch and room key were also found with her. There was no evidence of physical trauma, sexual assault, or suicide. Toxicology tests showed traces consistent with prescription medication found among her belongings plus non-prescription drugs such as Sunutab and Ibuprofen. A very small quantity of alcohol, about 0.02%, was present, but no other recreational drugs was present, but no other recreational drugs. Investigators and experts have, however, noted that the concentration of her prescription drugs in her system indicated that she was under-medicating or had stopped taking her medications recently. The investigation had determined how Lan died, but did not initially offer an explanation as to how she got into the tank in the first place. Doors and stairs that access the hotel's routes are locked, with only staff having the passcodes and keys, and any attempt to force them would supposedly have triggered an alarm. The hotel's fire escape could have allowed her to bypass those security measures, her scent trail was lost near a window that connected to it. Apart from the question of how she got on the roof, others asked if she could have gotten into the tank by herself. All four tanks were 4 by 8 foot cylinders propped up to concrete blocks. There was no fixed access to them and hotel workers had to use a ladder to look in the water. They were protected by heavy lids that would have been difficult to replace within. The hotel employee who found the body said that the lid was open at the time, removing the issue of how she could have closed the lid from inside. Police dogs that searched through the hotel for Lam, even on the roof, shortly after her disappearance was noted, did not find any trace of her. After her death, her Tumblr blog was updated, presumably through Tumblr's Q option, that allows posts to automatically publish themselves when the user is away. Her phone was not found either with her body or in her hotel room. Whether the continued updates to her blog were facilitated by the theft of her phone, the work of a hacker, or through the queue is not known. Nor is it known whether the updates are related to her death. To this day, it has not been confirmed how Elisa Lamb died. Many believe she was under the influence. Many say her bipolar disorder made her do it. Others believe that someone made her do it, but with the lack of evidence for all these popular theories, we may only speculate for now. Thank you guys so much for watching this Juby After Dark. I know it's been a long time since I've released an episode, and I'm happy to have finally found a topic that I deemed was ready to bring this series back. Definitely keep an eye out for more, and if you like the content that I make, please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot, and I would love to see you all here again. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next week.